Sensor fusion is not something we'll spend much time on, since it's mostly outside the scope of this course, but I'd like to talk for a bit about how it relates to machine learning. Sensor fusion is the process of combining data from more than one sensor to reduce uncertainty or make decisions based on information that one sensor alone cannot provide. One common application of sensor fusion is for calculating absolute orientation and heading. Think about an airplane or a virtual reality headset. How do you know which way either is facing? You can't get that information from just one sensor, so we need to combine the input of several sensors to find it. The accelerometer gives us acceleration and can tell us what's down, thanks to gravity. The gyroscope gives us rotational motion and the magnetometer can be used like a compass to figure out where north is. We can employ advanced filtering and fusion techniques to then calculate the absolute orientation and head for this device. The combination of these sensors is known as an inertial measurement unit, or an IMU. They're very popular in aerospace, robotics, and virtual reality applications. The Kalman filter is a particularly popular way of combining sensor data. Self-driving cars also rely on a suite of sensors and sensor fusion to figure out how to navigate roads and not run into things. You'll see things like radar, lidar, GPS, cameras, ultrasonic sensors, and odometers all working together to help the car figure out how to navigate. This is because each of these sensors has limitations, and the other sensors work to overcome those limitations. Only with all of the sensors working together can the self-driving program get a clear picture of what's happening on the road ahead. A really simple sensor fusion scheme might be to average the reading from several sensors to reduce noise. This also has the benefit of providing a redundant system in case one of the temperature sensors breaks, but you need to detect that so that its bad readings do not adversely affect the output. Perhaps this is where an anomaly detection system can come into play. Another example of using more than one of the same sensor is stereoscopic vision. With two cameras, you can combine the images to get some basic depth perception. This same idea holds for audio as well. The Echo uses this concept. It uses a ring of four to eight microphones to help cancel noise and track the speaker in the room. These are just a few examples of sensor fusion. You might be wondering, can I just replace all those complex filters and algorithms with a neural network and have it learn the features for me? The answer is, Maybe. Machine learning should not be seen as a replacement for sensor fusion, but rather as a complement. There has been some recent research that explores using convolutional neural networks as the primary sensor fusion technique. This shows some promise for using machine learning as a replacement for traditional sensor fusion. However, what you'll likely find is that you need a combination of traditional sensor fusion and machine learning when it comes to things like making decisions and predictions. So much like we used root mean square or MEL frequency sepstral coefficient efficiency as inputs to our machine learning model, you'll probably need to do something similar with sensor fusion. In this example, you might need to calculate the quaternions from the sensors first before feeding them to the model. Then the neural network can be used to make a decision or classification about what to do with that absolute orientation. This hopefully gives you some ideas about how you can use machine learning in combination with sensors on your embedded system. 